places where I saw you for the first time And that was when I knew I've been waiting all my life for you I've arrived in Belfast and I've seen my friends but they've got like to finish the rest of their shift so I'm just walking around and I've done a little bit of shopping had my lunch and like just chilled and read my book for a bit it's a bit quieter over here I had a really good flight over usually through Manchester Airport it's such a nightmare like they always stop me at security and like check my bag a hundred times and it's really annoying but I went straight through and yeah the flight was like 30 minutes it's so short but I've read loads of my book I'm like over halfway through it I feel like it's gonna get really sad soon and I'm probably gonna cry but yeah I've had lunch at this place called neighborhood which was really yummy and now I'm still waiting for my friends to finish work so I'm gonna go to the university art shop. The students sell stuff in there or something. It's weird, like I feel at home here straight away. I mean, I did live here for so long, but um, it's nice to kind of just slot back in. yesterday or should i say this morning i was supposed to get my flight at 10 10 however unfortunately because there's been so many storms recently the pilot said that our plane had already been delayed because they had to divert past a storm to birmingham and then get refueled and then fly over to belfast to pick us up we ended up leaving belfast at like quarter to one this morning if i had got my initial flight i would have been able to get the train home 
for like three quid but because we got in past one o'clock all of the trains were done and i also was really worried because i didn't think i had enough money in my bank account to actually pay for a taxi so there was a possibility i was gonna stay in the airport for like another four hours to wait for the first train home as you can tell i'm pretty irritated and really tired i should really start packing today because i'm moving house on friday but i just i'm not in the mood so instead i want to finish the second book that i started because I finished Swimming in the Dark by Tomas Jedrowski. You saw me reading this whilst I was in Belfast, but I never got to tell you my thoughts on it. So I thought I'd do that now. It follows two young men in Poland in the 80s and they meet at an agricultural camp. They form a relationship and it's really lovely at this summer camp because they feel very free because it's all in secret. But then when they go back to the city after summer, Poland in the 80s, anywhere in the 80s to be honest, very homophobic. In Poland at the time, it was under martial law, which means the military kind of run the state. You could be arrested for being gay. So it's about them navigating that. I love this. I rated it four out of five stars. Kind of just reminded me of a modern day Giovanni's Room. It references Giovanni's Room quite a lot. So if you haven't read that, then I suggest figuring out what it's about or actually reading it. This was very sad, but funnily enough, I was not actually mostly sad about their situation. I was more sad about his grandma but i would still recommend it obviously i really did enjoy it i finished this book just before my flight last night and i started this book called milk teeth by jessica andrews i'm about 100 pages into this i kind of don't really understand where it's going it's quite slow because we keep flitting between the present and the past so obviously that takes up a lot of time so we haven't progressed too much in the present day plot it is also so much more to do with body image and eating disorders in fact i didn't even think it was about that at all the blurb does not mention that at all and i really think it should because it could definitely be triggering to some people i'm actually like quite shocked that it doesn't say anywhere it's very much the experience of a teenage girl but the main part of the story is about her in her 20s and she's met this man but he moves to spain pretty early on into their relationship and she's like do I follow him? Do I not? Is it weird? Is it too early? She doesn't really know what she's doing with her life. So could she find something better? I'm just going to continue reading this today. I'm too tired to do anything else. I'm in the process of moving house and that has also meant that I really I just haven't really had time to read I mean I've had the time to be fair I've just been on TikTok because after all of the packing I'm just so exhausted that I don't really want to pick up a book especially this book to be honest I'm not loving it it feels like it's repeating the same things over and over again for example she says that she kind of feels insecure about if he really likes her or if he actually wants her to be in another country with him and i'm like i've heard this so many times before when is it going to change it also focuses on an eating disorder which was mentioned nowhere on the blurb of this book i didn't even read it in any of the reviews or the description on goodreads and i just i don't know where it's come from i wasn't prepared to read a book like this i thought it was going to be 
like a fun summer book but it's not i've read books about eating disorders before and i think because i was mentally prepared for it it was fine i don't like this because it kind of just came out of nowhere surely there's something coming that is good so i feel like i want to finish it to see what happens and it is only a short book so you know it's not like i'm wasting the rest of my life but as of now i don't think it's worth it i'm going to finish this video here because i have to start moving <laughs> but if you want to know my final review of this book then you can follow me on my Instagram, TikTok or Goodreads account and I'll post a review when I finish this. Can't say it's going to be great. <laughs> Thank you for watching this video anyways. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you in my moving vlog. Bye.